What will the bands be? We'll have to wait a little bit. I guess. Although I think you're right. I think Callista was going to get banned out. It has Maybe to. You can't, you can't give OQ Callista. Yeah, no. They all they had troubles in lane last game. Although Fury and Wraith held their own, especially with that smart early invade. Urgot, the first ban. There's the Callista ban. Yep. Zero surprise anytime. right there. Yeah. Every time that somebody's given it to OQ, it has pretty much gone terribly wrong for the enemy team. So. Yep. Do they take out the TF? Do they take out the LeBlanc this game? And of course, Najin has an extra ban freed up right now. If they want to continue with that Hecarim, it will be Cho'Gath actually banned out. Uh, against ban Ace. against Ace, yeah. So Najin knowing something about Ace. That we had yet to see. A strong Cho'Gath player, apparently. LeBlanc ban. And so what's the final ban going to be from Najin? Are they going to try to uh, Take away that Maokai, perhaps. I think the Hecarim is probably what you're going to want to deal with. Duke has oh, okay. shown that yeah. he and Pina are perfectly capable of handling some of these picks at the top side if they have to. And it will be a Zir, actually. Oh, okay. So just trying to ban out Ace a little bit more. Clearly, Najin a little bit more worried about it. There's a Cassiopeia ban against Tank. So what's it going to be? Do you think they're just going to go and first pick the Rumble? Or do you go for the jungle pick here? I don't know. You have the Sejuani available. You have yeah. the Rumble available. But they could also oh, just Hecarim. take the Hecarim. And I think that's smart, especially with how Duke's been playing. Yeah. I'm sure he will be a terror if he takes Smite. Although, the decision may be just to go ahead and take Ignite, because why not? I He's mean, been winning so many 1v1s. He has been killing Kube in lane, so yeah. farming Kube is a lot better than farming Grom. And he could do with Nar just as easily. But Hecarim's the stronger choice here, and he will lock it in. So what's it going to be? It will be Smite Hecarim also. All right. Oh, boy. It's showtime. <laughs> it is showtime. Well. So Severe possibly. And I think it's good for Eve to take that Rek'Sai. That's the only other champion that he's really been playing lately. And strong pick. Fury on Sivir, of course, strong as well. You don't want to give the team with Hecarim a Sivir either. Just waiting on that before they lock it in. I like that they're shying away from the Nidalee pick here. It just wasn't effective in their last composition. They couldn't get it rolling. And he, the thing about Eve is when he does that tier build so fast, he has no real gank pressure or dueling pressure. He's just trying to scale very quickly. But in the meantime, all of his lanes are on fire and he can't do anything to put him out, so. Yep. Rek'Sai and Sivir will be the pickups. They will have more early game pressure in that case, and Peanut may have to go for a more tanky jungler instead. I think now would be a good time to pick that Sejuani, don't you? Sure. Take Sejuani here. Maybe, maybe Peanut will try and match it. Actually, could Ooh. take the Elise. Yeah. Well, they changed a little bit of how her repel works, I believe, in uh, 5.6. I remember the Elise changes off the top of my head. It's not a champion I thought we'd see pick. They're going to go with the Jarvan instead, though. And Tank just going to take that Zareth yet again. Yeah, uh, he did have a good game on it last time. Uh, basically, they, they changed the missile speed on Cocoon again, which is probably the biggest change because it does make that skill shot easier to hit. Right. And then they lowered her movement speed in human form, raised it in spider form, and it the rebel change is just changing how it works with your button click. So that's not going right. to be too big of a deal. But it's not going to be picked this game. Yeah, I still don't think we're gonna see her for a while. Well, we're seeing her in China, but Well <laughs> what what don't we see in China really? <laughs> that's true, fair enough. Fair right. enough. And well, if they lock in this Nidalee, I wonder if it's going to be a top Rek'Sai for Kube. Could be, could be. Top Rek'Sai is certainly not a bad choice. You double down on your low mobility with the Void Rush, so you can take advantage of the enemy top laner's teleport just a little bit more. Also, very difficult to gank top Rek'Sai. And they do lock in that Nidalee. We'll see where it goes. It could be mid Nidalee, too, for could all be. we know. Yeah, Nautilus picked up as well. Uh, mid Nidalee able to all in Zareth very effectively. If you land one of those spears, you can really do a lot of damage to him. That's a good point. Maybe OQ thinking about going with the Ezreal yet again. 
And we don't know what the support pick will be either. So the bottom lane being chosen last by Najin. Meanwhile, a couple flex picks on Samsung. Wow. wow, that would be interesting. All right, going for the big tank line here. Seeing the Sivir and the poke from Nidalee. Trying to negate a little bit of that. We haven't seen Braum in a while, though. No, but I suppose if you've got the Nautilus ult coming at you one way, you throw the bomb out, Braum ult the other way, other way, rather. They do kind of cancel each other out, time-wise. And they will take it, all right. So Kane playing Braum, a champion that we haven't seen in a long time. And I like you on Ezreal again. I like Braum. He's cool. And he could just create such a big zone with the Cataclysm and oh, there we go. the Braum ultimate as well. So Zed will be locked in. It will be a top yeah. lane Rek'Sai. I guess so. So Kuve playing a champion we haven't seen him play before. <laughs> They're like, Kuve, play this champion so you can't get ganked. You'll have Tremor Sense now. Still going to get ganked, isn't he? <laughs> You have Flash, uh, you have an ability to tunnel out. There's no possible way you could die. Yeah, is he going to go for the smite? It doesn't look like it. Playing it extra safe up in that top lane. Oh, look at their, all their little cheerfuls with their players. Duke yep. will be awfully lonely on his side. Duke. He gets to be in a dinosaur onesie, though. So he's got that going for him. Yeah, that's pretty sick. So Najin and the Empire looking to get a 2-0 here in their final match of the regular season, and Samsung just trying to avoid being 2-0'd yet again, having only won a single series against IM all season long. Well, Samsung has a really good 1-3-1 here. With we do. Zed and Rek'Sai, and they also will be able to respond immediately to a, a lot of ganks with that Rek'Sai. Right. So they're trying to create 5 before advantages, man-up advantages with the Rek'Sai ultimate when Duke's teleport is down. And they'll have good split push too, so could be interesting. Could yep. be interesting. Uh, we will see who can take it. Time to get into the game. Najin versus Samsung, possibly our last game of the regular season. It's showtime. Fire versus Samsung Galaxy. Fans still cheering loud, and we'll see where Najin ends up here. Perhaps a bit of an invade for some wards early on. Yeah, interesting they're committing four people up to the top side at the moment. Yeah. Huh. And some cheerfuls for Najin. Mostly for Peanut. This is going to be like a Snow White situation where Watch is back at the team house being like, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the cutest pro gamer of all? And it shows Peanut. He's like, no! And he has to send someone to like get Peanut's heart. Wow, dark. I know. Well, well some, hey, man, some, I didn't write some, the fairy tale, all right? That's some dark inter team politics right there. I didn't make this up. Some dude hundreds of years ago. I should say intra team politics. Yeah, I messed it up. Yeah, well, Najin. Coming, coming here with another strong composition. Great at assassinating the back line again. They traded out Rumble for this Hecarim, but Duke should be able to easily get there with the use of his ultimate and some nice flanks. And going with that smite. So we'll see if he can repeat someday's dominating performance on that champion. Kuve is able to take a camp right at level one, though, because he is Rek'Sai. Yep. Oh. So we will so see camps taken by both of the junglers right here. Or top laners, rather. Of course, the jungler's taking the camps. Tank is going to be kind of the focus of Samsung as far as who they want to eliminate. OK, the OQ just hit two off of Krugs. Meanwhile, experience was shared off of Grom between Fury and Wraith, and Kane was already in lane. So level two, Ezreal starting this one out. Not, not the greatest champion to have level two on. I yeah, mean, having Arcane, having Essence Flux or Arcane Shift doesn't really make it Whoa. that much of a difference. But Nice poke from Tank early on onto Ace. Yeah, Ace also starting with the long sword, so only a couple pots, not a whole lot of sustain for him. And not a ton. 
And I'm curious to see what uh, Kane's going to be able to do on this prom too. Like we said, in picks and bands, we haven't seen it for a long time. Kane's really good at these melee supports, though, so I'm, I assume he's going to be just fine on this champion. And he provides that tankiness that certainly his team can use. He's wanting to try and take out Tank here if he gets six. And use that burst and the immobility of Zareth against him. And we'll see how uh, well Duke is able to do in the top lane, too. You know, this top lane Rek'Sai, too, from Kuve, the nice thing is is that he can know if Duke is in his jungle counter jungling without actually engaging or committing fully to him. So yeah. he can give a warnings for his allies to collapse. It's a very interesting top lane pick. This is the first time we've actually seen it, in spite of Trace practicing it a bunch in solo queue. That's been pretty popular in China, but we haven't seen it in Korea until today. Yeah, well, it's been used a couple times in China. Yeah. Not very successfully, I might add. Here we go. Oh, Tank flashes right away with Flash and Wraith to get that stun. Oh, oh. Anchor misses, so Tank oh. dodging it barely. Wraith taking a lot of damage there, too. Wow, so Whoops. nice yeah. attempt at a setup, but they still can't quite get the damage done. Tank had exhaust just in case. Yeah, if that, uh, if that hook had hit, it might have been a different story, but Tank barely able to get out of the way. Well, now they have a chance to go in on him again, though, right? So Yeah, well, flash down, yeah. Xerath is very vulnerable in the mid lane. All they traded for was a flash from Wraith, which is certainly a trade that you're going to be happy to make. Ooh. Eve actually stealing away the blue buff from Peanut right there. Yeah, you Peanut. can certainly do that with this Nidale. Peanut falling behind in terms of the jungle, Nidalee. Making a play on the mid lane, blowing the flash, and then taking the buff right afterwards. Nicely done. Kane trying to block a bit of the damage coming in from Fury. And Duke actually might get dope here. Yeah, he's having a hard time dealing with this Rek'Sai. Of course, it's yeah. one of the, uh, the annoying things about lane Rek'Sai is she can heal up. Her sustain is incredible. Yeah. Oh, they will go for it. There's a knockup on a Duke. Kuve taking those turret hits, and it looks like it's going to be. Whoa, first blood. Yes, it does go over to Eve, but Eve taken down Peanut's by the turret. Two. Peanut gets it. Will he get to Kuve trying oh. to escape with that burrow, and he'll make it out. Yeah, didn't want to go for it. He's only level three right now, so. Yeah, it'd be tough to chase. Uh, besides, trading that kill probably going to be good enough. Duke actually going for the fast skirmisher saber this game. Now, sometimes we start to see people try and get that bomby cinder first in this build, but he just wants the 20% damage reduction. Mm -hmm. Looks like maybe a problem with Peanut's computer at the moment. Yep. See if they can fix it. There's a chance for Duke to pass out the, the gum of skill again. <laughs> he's getting a lot of chances in these games, actually. Yeah. Worked great in game number one. Look at Peanut. He's such a cute Rengar. Yep. Watches Lee Sin, I guess. <laughs> okay. Too bad we didn't get to see more of Peanut's Rengar. I enjoyed watching that back when it was still much more in the meta than it is right now. Yeah. He will be taking his hard won first blood money and investing it in a tier, of course. He will never vary his build, ever. <laughs> no, I don't think so. This uh, this Skirmisher Saber for Duke, though, is going to be really nice against Kuve because being able to smite him and reduce the incoming damage is going to be make it much easier for him to deal with it. You're trading a little bit by Kuve right there. Yeah. It's a nice harassment, actually. Pina's probably going to go back after this anyway, so might as well make some trades as long as you're sure that they're safe. Get Kuve. Oh, OQ getting really low. Had to burn both Flash and Summoner Eel, actually, to get out of that. How'd they catch him? I don't know. Looks like, Looks like a, probably a hook from Wraith right after the pause ended. Yeah. Interesting that he replay. couldn't have Arcane shifted out of that, but... Yep. Must have been a mighty fine hook from Wraith. Had to make up for that one in mid lane, I guess. And we did see Oku and Kane struggle a little bit in the beginning of the first game. It didn't end up slowing them down too much. Kuve coming back to lane, of course. This is so annoying to deal with. Yep. Well, Samsung going for the Dragon at the same time, too. And it looks like they should be able to get it. No vision, no pressure from Najin right now. And they will. They'll get it. Samsung looking a lot better this game so far. Yep. Top lane Rek'Sai is just really, really irritating. Going for the... Bami Cinder as well, so already having some extra HP and some AOE damage, just trying to continually push this Hecarim in. Yeah, Duke is Look having a really hard time with this. Yeah, 
I don't think he was prepared for this matchup up in the top side. They first picked the Hecarim, of course, and uh, Duke hasn't been able to get into that jungle in order to take some CS because he's being forced right now to make a decision between farming under his turret or losing a bunch of minions to his turret to go try and use that smite. That's a really good way to handle this top lane smite. I think in general, if you can just keep them pushed into turret, they can't really use it, can they? Yeah, Kube also can go back in jungle, as we just saw, without actually having that smite, just because he yeah. can heal wow. that damage up instantly. And Rek'Sai that. does a lot of damage early on, starting with that Doran's Blade as well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually really surprised we haven't seen top lane Rek'Sai before now. Huh. It's interesting to see how well it is punishing this top lane smite from Duke. Duke had to go back just oh, for flash a flash ult on the tank. Ace going for it. Gets exhausted, though. It's not going to be enough damage. Ult, though, coming in from tank. One more. Can he do it? Can he do it? Waiting for it. And, oh, he misses, but Kane gets there. <laughs> He's still going to get it with the Q anyway. All right. He was, Kane just pushing him forward at the end. He was zoned out right there, so yeah. he tried to do something. That was hilarious, though. Waiting <laughs> for the timer on that living shadow so that he could get a better shot at that ult. Yeah, trying it out. And Tank again coming up with almost a solo kill right there. Of course, he may not have gotten that if Kane hadn't made that roam all the way from the bottom side. Couldn't even give poor Kane the assist, though. And Duke really having trouble, falling behind 30 CS already and just yeah, you tower don't see getting that. chipped. You don't see and that with Duke very often. Not able to really make use of this smite whatsoever. Yep. Turns out running the Ignite may have been a little bit more impactful this game. But we'll see. He has, with that smite, he always has the chance to play from behind and start taking some jungle camps to really get back into things because yeah. he can, even if he doesn't catch up in the minion score, because of the fact that he gets that extra 30 gold and he can take these higher gold uh, jungle camps, he can catch up in gold quite quickly. That's a good point. It's you deceptive. Do have a, you it's, do have a unique way to come back, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's, it's deceptive in this situation. Interesting. Tank's certainly doing just fine in that mid lane, of course. Whoa, two-shot barrage, got the blue buff. Goku takes that one. Did they even have a ward there? No. No, that was blind. Wow. Yeah. They knew that uh, Zed was trying to get the handoff, so they got a little yeah. bit lucky. Not bad. OQ up about uh, 15 CS or so against Fury, so coming back a bit in that lane. So really, only the top lane kind of suffering. and. I think you made a good point where you can get a lot of extra gold because of that smite, even if he does kind of lose lane. Yeah, Kuve continues to go back and farm the Krugs, though, instead of extending into lane. So he's playing this pretty passively yep. and just trading with Duke uh -oh. in these situations. Wow, Duke. Trying to pull him back right into there, Pina. But Kuve not taking any risks at all. They're playing pretty safe. Has to go back again. Wow. Well, they're going to give the blue buff over to Tank, at least, and that one's not going to get stolen. It will allow uh, Kube to do potentially some damage to that top lane turret, though. Okay, Cinder Hulk done from Duke, but he'll miss a few more CS. Doesn't have that TP, so he loses about half a wave into the turret right now. Yeah, looks like he's just going to go through the jungle and take a few things on his way back. Just kind of giving up on that wave, maybe. Yeah, going for the Gromp. Looks like he will. Of course, getting that Gromp or at least smiting it will help him trade better with Kuve also, which I think is actually the main motivation right there is he. Yeah. It'll also give him more uh, gold, uh, honestly, and experience than what was left of that minion wave, too. Oh, Tank could be in a little bit of trouble. All coming in for Wraith, even, and that is not something you can escape from a Zareth. But Najin, uh, not really in position to turn it around. They used quite a bit to take out Tank, but it worked. Yep, certainly was effective. They didn't even have to blow a summoner right there either, yeah. so that was pretty, pretty good for them. They blew the flash and got the kill anyway. Hmm. Kube still lurking. Oh, Duke. Trying to see us a little bit, but he's got to be careful against his Rek'Sai. Man, look at all that damage. Wow, Duke. Duke actually taking a lot of damage. This is a minute before. Ooh, he had to use the ult. And a minute before Dragon, that is not a good thing. Interesting that Duke chose not to use the smite right there just to yeah. try and take a little bit less damage in I that mean, exchange. You know he's probably got two uh, you know, two charges right now too, so that was a bit puzzling. Maybe Duke, you know, not too used to using this top lane smite yet as well. So I didn't think he expected this 
how much damage the stop lane Rex. He looks really unused to this matchup, and yeah, yeah, I think unused to playing this smite in the top lane as well. But Kuve just dominating him this game. Yeah, right there in the brush, just in case Duke comes to try to save this. And Duke playing it pretty carefully, yeah. Don't want to go in on that one. All right, well, Dragon up in 20 now. Samsung was able to get the first one, and they certainly have a lead here to go for a second one, too. Yeah, they are making moves on it, but I'd be really worried with this Rek'Sai now with the Sunfire Cape completed. You know, Tank just doesn't have very much damage yet. He had to go for that Arm Guard first, so that's a big money sink, having invested 1,200 gold into that item. So Najib probably going to need some more time. Of course, OQ going for the tier build as well on Ezreal, and Duke being so far behind, a bit risky, I think. They're still trying to scale up right now. Yeah. I suppose late game, who do you give the edge to? Uh, it's a little bit tougher between these two comps, isn't it? Yeah, it, it just depends. I think that Najin has a team fight advantage, but if Samsung split pushes well with the leads that they already have, especially with the Rek'Sai, I think they have a strong chance of just creating a massive gold lead. Oh, here comes the teleport. They're gonna be ready for it. Kube coming down to bot lane. Fury engaging as well, too. Nice knock up on the Peanut and Kane. Oku just backing away. Here comes the Xerathal to try to help, but he's too far out of range. Oku and Kane just getting chased back to their turret. They can just dive this. Eve coming in, he'll get one kill. He'll get taken out by the turret. No, he'll live! Wow, barely surviving that second turret shot. So that's three kills for Samsung. Wow. Not I'm, any health to take out the dragon. But they knew the oh, TP they was up right there, yeah. and they came in anyway. So Kube able to tank this one out, considering he already has the Sunfire Cape. Wow. And he will be able to deal the rest of the damage as well as heal himself up through that dragon fight. So Samsung jumping out to 3K gold lead right now, and yep. there's just nobody here for Najin. OQ isn't doing that much damage right now. All he has is Mana Mune. It's like the easiest fight ever for Samsung. Yeah, and because of all their gap closers and the Sivir ultimate, it's quite simple for them to chase the members of Najin down. Wow. Well, this one's going about as one-sided the other way as game one went for Najin. Yeah, surprisingly enough. Samsung really pushing their lead. Well, with Duke being, you know, crushed pretty hard in the top lane, it just seems to be throwing the entire Najin team off balance here. Well, without Duke doing well on this Hecarim, they have this Ezreal and this Zareth that they're just kind of waiting on to do something right now, but they can't stop this split push, which is surprising when, of course, you're playing that Hecarim. So, Kuve can continue just to invade the jungle as well. Pretty much do what Duke was doing last game. And they're still scrapping up in the top side at the moment. Duke trying to deal some damage, but Kuve easily able to get out. Yeah, Najin's really going to have to play for a late game comeback at this point. It's kind of their only chance, I'd say, huh? Yeah. And as long as Samsung, you know, even though they don't have the greatest team fighting team in the world, they do lack a little bit of initiation. They've got several ultimate to get people in position like Nautilus and Rek'Sai. Yeah. They, uh, with enough gold lead, if they get enough turrets and continue to expand this lead through split pushing, they should be in a really good position. But Ace, you know, having that death, he's not really, he doesn't really have the items he needs yet. No Blade of the Ruined King at this stage, so he's still waiting for a few more minutes before he can kind of move into bot lane and take it by himself. And you have good wave clear, and you, of course you have that Nidalee heal as well to give Sivir just a little bit more attack speed to help take down towers, so Samsung just need to set up for that, and they should be good to go. Yeah. I'd like to say late game, Najin would you know, just be a better team fighting team, not only be, you know, not because of comp, but just because they're just better. Yeah, but a gold lead can buy you a lot of mistakes, Stella. Oh yeah, buy you a lot of mistakes. It's very true. Well, Seraph's done for Eve now too. So he's got that first 
big item along with his enchant as well. Yeah, he's starting to get scary. Actually, that is a really fast. Sarah, holy cow, that is fast. Yep. Before 17 minutes, he got that first blood and immediately went back and picked up that tier. So he gets it much faster. Usually I, I watch him in these games, and he gets it around 18 minutes, but this is so fast. That Duke fighting Kuve here, Wraith close by to try to help out. Let's see what happens. Looks like they'll just part ways for now. Actually, Duke is catching catching up in terms of CS. He's getting there. And he was able to do a bit better against that uh, against Kuve in that fight. It still wasn't totally even, but you know, maybe once he picks up a couple pieces of this Trinity course, the Phage certainly is going to help. Right, Kuve pretty much building full tank this game as well. So yeah. eventually, I think Duke with the Trinity Force can perhaps outpush this Rek'Sai. I haven't seen enough talk Rek'Sai to be sure about that yet. Well, we'll find out this game probably. We'll tank Discover going for uh, yeah. Tank going for Zonia's this game. That's his second item. So his damage will be a little bit lower than Death Cap or something, but he'll have that survivability if he gets jumped on by Zed. Against that Death Mark, I think it's probably a pretty good buy. Yeah, and considering, too, that the only AP damage really on the team that he has to worry about is Eve, uh, it does contain quite a bit of value for him. That's Ozu, true. Taking a couple of Raptors before heading into the mid lane to try and hold on here for a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he's going to go for that Trinity Force next, too. Yeah, that's a bit interesting, actually. So no full blue build for OQ. He wants to deal as much damage as possible with his poke and try and synergize with tank. Oh, Kube just harassing Duke so much. It's pretty annoying. It is indeed. This, this smite really hasn't been particularly helpful for Duke this game. Yeah. All right, well, another Dragon up in about 45 seconds. And that'll be Najin's next chance. They're down 0-2 to Dragons right now, though, so they really need to kind of pick it up here. Yeah, that is something that's very nice for Sam's side, too, is that pressure that they have. You can see Ace now down in the bottom side. Actually, when Ghost Blade finishes Ghost Blade first, it's a very interesting item build. Hmm. You don't see very often. I, I really think Blade is quite a bit better than that, but... Yeah, I don't know if that really helps you, you know, stick to your targets better than Blade of the Rune King does. I think Blade would do a better job of that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's a bit, a bit odd. Hmm. Plus, you get a more permanent attack speed boost than you do with the Blade or the Ghost Blade. So yeah, he All may right. just be backing off a little bit, playing Dragon's more conservatively up. until he gets that item. Doesn't look like Najin really wants to try to take this one. They've got a ward there. They know Dragon is happening. But did they have the timer? Oh, two shot barrage, not doing it. And so Dragon number three goes to Samsung. A lot of damage on this mid lane turret too. Do you feel like Najin really should have tried to contest that a bit more? No, I think they have to be really scared right now about their current status. And Duke, if he can farm up just a little bit, if he can get that Trinity Force, can he one shot one of their carries? Yes, he can. Whereas Kuve's full tank build isn't going to have the same effect on the back line of Najini Empire, so. I think they're just waiting right now, playing the very patient game, yeah. seeing if they can actually close this gold gap, maybe take a turret or two, and try and claw their way back into the game. Well, the fact that Duke has only died once, uh, even though he is down in CS, that really does help quite a bit. The CS save. gap is holding firm around 25 to 30 as well. Right. And as the game goes on, that's going to matter less and less. Here comes Kuve again. Now he has a Randuin's Omen. Oh, he's able to get back to lane so easily. God, that's so much armor already with the Ninja Tabby as well, too. Having a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think he will. So Trinity Force done for OQ now. Do you think he's going to go for uh, Last Whisper next? Might need it. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do. Obviously, Kuve, a huge problem for him at the moment in terms of actually dealing damage. And Tank's going to be charged with doing most of it to him, but it's a 
tall order considering he's already up at about 3k HP. Oh, Kube just clearing out wards in the jungle. Seeing everybody with that tremor sense. This wave clear is so good as well from the Sivir. Yep. It's pretty good from Najin though too. That's yeah. made it a bit difficult. But you need to be careful here. Tank this, could get dove. Yeah, Tank has the blue buff though. That's the one thing that's gonna probably make this go a little bit differently. Yep. Uve still looking for an angle right now, Peanut. And Tank backing off into the jungle. Meanwhile, Ace taking up the split pushing in the bottom side. Still no more items for him. Look at the uh, trinkets on Samsung as well. Just four upgraded ward totems already. They've got great vision in the enemy jungle. It's really working out quite well for them. And that's enabling them to put all this pressure on simultaneously. Duke's going to grab that Gromp with the smite. Yep. And Najin simply doesn't have enough lenses to deal with this. There's just there's too many wards. I mean, there are eight wards that they can put down on the map just from the totems for free right now. Yeah. Well, this top lane Hecarim is, or top lane uh, Rek'Sai, rather, for Kuve is doing such a great job of handling Duke. You wonder why they didn't bring this one out a little bit sooner. Well, we've seen a lot of Rek'Sai bans recently, though, and this may be oh, part of true. the reason is it's that true. This top lane Rek'Sai is so powerful, and you can flex it as a jungle pick. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's trying to get in there. Yeah. Can't actually finish off those walls, but just his presence being a constant nuisance. I really like how Samsung's doing this. I love the four war totems early. When you have this advantage, and you know you can win the split push, why not just go for this and just slowly choke the life out of your opponent? That's exactly what they're doing. Payback for last game, I guess. And Duke just mostly running away this game. This could be one of the rare games where he doesn't get MVP. Although, when they lose, obviously he never gets MVP. Well, I'm not sure if Najin's going to be able to come back from this one. It's looking a bit unlikely. I mean, again, I feel like you can't count them out because they do, they are just better at team fighting. Yes, so Samsung is a young team and they do make a lot of mistakes. And the later the game goes, the more mistakes Samsung is likely to make too. So I feel like the longer the game goes on, the better chance Najin has to win. Well, it depends on if that gold lead gets any bigger. Well, there's gonna be a point though where the gold leads aren't gonna matter because it's gonna be, you know, the same items really on both sides, same amount of items. They're gonna take that turret. Yes. So Samsung still way ahead, but... And fourth Dragon up in a minute as well, and that's really yeah. the big limiter right here. They've gotten such a commanding advantage in terms of Dragons and in terms of Towers, and Najin simply, because of the 1-3-1, can't get close to any oh, Tower Oh, Deathmark right onto OQ, he's in big trouble. Kane trying to save him, can't do it though. Not providing enough tankiness, and Ace does exactly what he needs to do. He found a target and took it out. Yeah, finally completing that Ghost Blade and the Blade of the Ruined Kings, so having yeah. both actives available to pile on the damage during the death mark, and they will easily take that one. Are they actually going to go for a Baron right here? They could just threaten it. They're not sweeping out the brush. Oh, they're, oh man, I've seen this before. But with no carry around, can they really do anything about it? <laughs> it's a little bit easier to do it in this position where you aren't losing horribly. Wow, Najin really should be setting up for drag right now. Yeah. All right. Samsung's gonna get away with it. Get away with what, standing in the brush? Yep. Well, just provided a little bit of breathing room for Najin and a chance to actually farm some of these lanes without the presence of these champions that have been so invasive in their jungle, weighing on their minds, and now Will we go after the Baron or the Dragon right here? Samsung already with the angle on it, but again, because they have so many ward totems, they don't have great ways to clear the vision. Yeah. Teleport coming in uh, right next to each other, actually. Najin, can they do this one? Tank comes in, Peanut gets grabbed, and they're still going for that Dragon. Gube, there's Peanut with the Cataclysm. 
A little bit of damage coming in from Tank over the top, and Samsung just so far ahead. They're going to take the Dragon, and now they can turn on Dinaj if they want to. Tank gets ulted. Where's the follow-up? Fury ready, and Fury is just un unopposed as he comes in here, does so much damage. Kane is his first victim, and there are going to be more. Oki over the wall. Fury's going to take him out, it looks like. And a huge fight for Samsung. They are going to win it with a perfect ace. Oh, boy. Yep. Now I think we can say it's uh, probably over. They're going to go for this Baron. And even though they are low health, nobody up from Najin to stop this right now. Yeah, Kubik, Kubik can just come back and tank it. Yeah, yeah. Right in there, even though Wraith is a little bit low, so no problem. Finishing off the Baron right now while the entirety of Najin is as lovely gray streams. Oh, yeah. Well, 10,000 gold lead. This is like a direct 180 of the last game. <laughs> Yeah, props to Samsung. I think yep. they did a really good job of playing this out. Well, they picked it banned very intelligently, and, and like you said, when they came to the actual game, they made a lot of good decisions. Yeah, they got some lane advantages right there, and here we go. Tank gets in the front line, gets hit by the boomerang blade and the depth charge, and then Kube in the back line just doing work right there. No one escaping, especially Tank right now, and he actually picks up that double kill, so Kube really coming back strong. Yeah. Fury uh, did a good job with positioning there too, so just stuck next to Wraith and autoed a lot. I, I really like what we're seeing from Samsung though. I think that they know that they how to play this 1-3-1 well. I love their trinket upgrades this game, just a snowball. So Samsung, you know, this is one of the few times we've seen them take a lead and then really, really do a good job of playing through until the end. Yeah, shockingly the very, very last match of the regular season. Last match for them no matter what. But both of these teams, both Samsung and Najin, having real issues playing from behind too. Yeah, certainly looks that way. And this is just an unstoppable situation. You get this kind of gold lead, 10K, with a comp designed a 1-3-1 and a Baron buff. This is brutal. Yeah. There you go, nearly all three tier twos dying at the same time. This is ridiculous. Yeah, next one in top lane is gonna be taken out. There it goes. And bottom lane, not too much longer. Here comes Eve, just to provide some zoning spears right there. Meanwhile, the cannon minion remains alive in the back, has to be cleared out with the true shot barrage. Uh, but throughout this, Kube is still oh, pushing that geez. top lane, going after the inhibitor turret now, and somebody's going to need to go back and deal with this. They're going to send Duke. But Kube is just so far ahead right now. Unless he sits under, tur under turret for the next minute or so. Yep. Wow, what a battle. <laughs> <laughs> what an exciting fight. Oh, yes. OQ just really low from those Nidalee Spears, it looks like. And they're going to take this bottom tier two now. So how about that? A Baron, a perfect ace, three turrets now. And they're not done yet. Getting pretty unstoppable. I think this is definitely Samsung's most impressive game of the season. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've never seen them dominate anybody like this. Not even in their win versus IM did they win a game by this much. Yeah, they've taken some advantages before, and they've, they've taken some wins, but they haven't been the ones to really press an edge yeah. and have a good read on their own team composition. This game, though, they've done a great job of that. Yes, they have. That cannon minion still pounding away at the turret. Not, not a lot that... Najin can do. Finally, OQ takes it down. Nope. Duke actually pushing Kuve back a little bit there. I suppose Baron buff is gone now. So it'll be a little bit more even, but Kuve is still in pretty good shape. Again, you know, and the ability to heal up, you know, without going anywhere is so big for this top lane Rek'Sai. That passive is huge. Oh, they're going in onto Kane. Kane gets hooked. There goes the turret. Ult comes through. OQ having to flash away. Gets grabbed anyway. Ace with an easy kill there. Now they're going after that inhibitor. And it looks like Eve is going to grab another kill onto Peanut on the way out. Here comes Duke running over Fury. Fury getting a bit low here. He'll get taken down. And Najin, a double kill for Tank as they kind of turn this one around. Ace still there, though. Nice flash. Wow. wow. What a play from Tank. Wraith coming in, gets exhausted. Oh, finally gets the kill, but a triple kill in the end for Tank. Really playing that impressively. <laughs> Wraith controlling a little bit. There we go. Kill comes in. 
four and four on each side. Only the top laner surviving that fight. Yeah, totally okay to make that trade if you're Samsung, though. You didn't lose any Baron buffs off of it. You have a minute until the Dragon spawns so you can t contest for number five. Yep. And you take out two inhibitor turrets for it. Definitely a worthwhile trade right there. Wraith going in onto Kane. Oh, you eating a depth charge and a death mark. Dying quite quickly, and then, so you can see Fury maybe getting a little bit too eager right yeah, now. Maybe. He has to be worried about Duke Sue, who comes into that top side because Rek'Sai not joining the fight in the end. But what a great little play here from Tang. Flash stun into the Q to finish wow. off the kill. That was a really nice move. Huh. And then Tank is leading Duke on a merry, a merry chase around the Nexus. Samsung also had a big, big buy by going back right there. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Kube now with that Thornton Mail, too. Which uh, actually doesn't do a whole lot against his team. Just against Duke, maybe, I suppose. Not really even Oku that much. Here comes what could be the fifth dragon for Samsung. Uh, actually, OQ because his Q procs on hit effects. Oh, 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 you're right. And here we go, Cataclysm comes in, but just traps Mina. There we go, a little bit of kills coming in. OQ gets one, OQ gets jumped on by Ace, though. Ace trying to get another kill. That's a double kill for OQ, actually. Najin turning this one around, trying to anyway. It's still two on both sides. Kuve just gets in and wrecks Kane, and there goes Tank. Zonius or not, he's going to get taken out. That's an Ace. They lost Ace and Fury in that Ace, but the Ace was still better for Samsung. Ace, Ace, Ace. <laughs> Well, Kuve here, you know, we've been wondering about this guy because he is top 20 in solo queue in Korea. His individual performance, his ability to carry on the ladder is quite clear, but it hasn't been there in the professional matches, but 4-0-9, incredibly dominating lane performance from him in this game. I have to give him some props for really showing up here in the last match of the season. Yeah. Still no dragon. They really should just go for the dragon. Well, funny thing, too, is that the lanes were kind of pushing up, so they weren't even able to take any of the uh, vulnerable inhibitors, too, after that fight. I think they should have just gone for the dragon right there and then push out the lanes afterwards. They'll get it either way. It's okay. Waiting for the dragon to... Waiting for the their allies to come back yeah. up to get the buff. You know, there's, there's nothing to be said for that. But. It's the main thing. Well, you want to get that fifth buff on everybody. It's pretty important. So now they can actually... Perhaps finish this game? I would think so. Can't help with that. Final dragon buff. But yeah, as for as for the thorn mail, it does proc off of the Ezreal Qs, so uh, it's pretty annoying. Yeah. A Baron up in a couple seconds here. And will Samsung decide to just take that one? Just to kind of ensure their victory. When you have that fifth dragon buff, you can certainly fight at Baron if you want to. Najin not really in a position to stop that. Ace way down the bottom of the map, split pushing though, so that might make it a little bit tougher to take Baron. Although if you pull people away they to have to go deal stop with the split though. push, yeah, then you kind of get the Baron for free, don't you? And that's exactly what's going to happen, it looks like. They have to go stop him, but yep. Duke does have TP up. Yeah. There we go. Clearing out some wards just to make it extra safe. Now the Baron began, yep. He almost popped. By Fury. And here we go, Zarathal just out of range. What? Uh, okay then. <laughs> He's shooting Zed, actually. Oh, yeah, there we go. A little bit of damage. Duke trying to get this kill. Looks like he might be able to do it. Yep, he can. So there's one Baron buff they don't have to worry about, I guess. And they actually prevent the inhibitor from going down. But can they prevent this Baron wow. powered push? Samsung not going with it. They're going to have to recall. This Jeez, is. Uh, they they overcommitted yeah. to taking that inhibitor right there when bit awkward. they were trying to do. The Baron at the same time, and OQ spamming Slapping. slash laugh after the kill onto Zed. Now they have to wait oh, even man. longer for this game to actually end. And that's a big kill, too. Not having the Baron onto the Zed means that it is more difficult to split push. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, this is... We talked about the only ways where Najin could possibly come back, and, you know, this is one of them. As the game goes on, again, Samsung's going to be the team that you think is going to be making more mistakes. And I mean, if Najin comes back yeah. from a 16k gold deficit with no barons and one turret, and they've lost every single dragon with five dragons on Samsung, I will be truly <laughs> amazed, Noah. If, well, if anyone can give that to them, it will be Samsung. I'd be pretty shocked, too. But, uh, kind of 
some cracks starting to appear in the armor for Samsung here. Not the not the cleanest closing out of a game we've ever seen. Well, no, they're very rarely in a position to close out a game. They don't have yeah, a wealth true. of experience. They're not used to being ahead. <laughs> like, shouldn't we be 17,000 gold down? All right, here they come. And Rek'Sai pushing the bot lane. Looks like you'll be able to get that inhibitor finally. Yeah, nobody's going to be able to stop him there. And Samsung pushing ever so cautiously and Looks like they'll be able to get both inhibitors. Kuve gets that one, and then in the top lane, looks like they'll both be going down around the same time. Yep, there they go. So, finally, Samsung ready to close things out, it looks like. Still have the Baron buff, so they can move this minion wave up pretty quickly. Try and take the finish right here, even though they do not have the five Dragon Stacks any longer. With this tremendous of a gold lead, they should be able to win. Yeah. You would think so. Whoa, wow, that's a lot of damage on the tank. Jeez. Yeah, this Eve build, I mean, late game, it sure does do a lot. Especially with a lead like this. And uh, there we go, a little bit of zoning with the Xerath ultimate. Everyone just hopping out of range or dodging the shots. And here comes the next Baron wave. More damage on the Kane. And slowly. But surely that turret and the rest of Najin getting poked down. Siveralt, there we go. They're going to try to come in. Peanut a little bit trapped. Everyone jumps onto him. An easy call there. Nice knock up onto Kane. Kane throws that Brahmal backwards. Gets a couple knocks up, knock ups himself. It's not going to be enough. That's going to be a third inhibitor down in favor of Samsung. Everybody's still alive there. No Baron buff, no Dragon buff. But the first minion waves are starting to come in with those super minions, I believe. And so Samsung can use those to push the victory. Oh, Duke gets grabbed. Kane comes in to try to save him, gets taken down. And Ace, looking for an opportunity, just does a bit of damage to Duke there. Oh, Eve going deep. Oki with the kill on the Ace in the end, but he is alone along with Duke here. There we go. First Nexus turret taken down. Second one taken down. And there goes the Nexus, and Samsung will force a game three here in our final match of the regular season. GG. Wow. Well. Surprising, surprising result, yeah. but Samsung a very well won victory. I think they did a great job of using that composition, and yeah. at least they're ending. Even if they lose this last game, at least they ended playing their best game of the season. I agree. You know, I mean, it's as strong as we've seen them look, and Duke's like, wow, I really have no idea how to play against top line Rexai. I guess. Well, strong pick, and Kuve did a great job of playing it. So they did. Well, you think Najin is going to come into this game three a little bit more prepared. We'll see if they can close it out, but it's kind of, it'd be kind of embarrassing to lose to Samsung in your last match, wouldn't it? <laughs> Give you a lot to think about in the offseason.